welcome back today. Thank you again for joining me. We're going to be working with some fused glass um, spectrum today. I've got the spectrum. I've got some clear glass. I have the vanilla glass, which I absolutely love, and some almond. Anyway, I'll share the, the inspiration for this piece later. It is um, a, an old mosaic. It has very similar colors for the grout lines. I'm going to be using the Alpine Blue Opal. Oh, yeah, I was looking up reactions. I'm pretty sure this one reacts with the French Vanilla to give me some fun, uh, like, brown lines in between everything. But I didn't get a chance to double check. So we'll just all find out together. And I was going to hold up a sample of, like, here's the finished project. However, uh, they're all in the studio and I'm at home. So I have a lot of samples here, but not all of them. Anyway, to start with, I'm going to use the Morton board to cut my base piece of glass. So I like designing on clear. This is my base piece of glass initially, but when I'm done, I'm going to be able to flip this and fire it with the clear cap. So the clear cap is always nice. It gives you a little bit uh, more depth in your piece and the pieces that you put on don't spread around as much. You know, your lines that are against the kiln shelf stay nice and crisp, all of your design there. Uh, this piece of glass is six inches, so I want to make it a square. I haven't cut any of my pieces yet. I'm just going to do this process. I basically just gathered my materials. This is not uh, cooking show quality today. We're just going to go through and do this pro process all together. All right, six inches. I've set on my Morton board. Notice I'm using this cutter gauge. That's because the cutter gauge is going to help me determine where the zero mark for my ruler is. Uh, the ruler doesn't, or the uh, the cutter doesn't go against the bar, right? There's a little bit of um, space between the ruler and the bar, the bar and the scoring wheel, that is. So anyway, the cutting gauge helps us figure that space out. I've set my first glass stop, and even though I have a nice straight edge here, I've checked, here's the nice straight edge here, I've checked against the grid, that's a nice straight edge there too. I still like to set up another cutter gauge for backup. So to set the cutter gauge, you just give it a quarter of a turn, and that's going to loosen this up, right? It moves back and forth. To set it the same, I'm going to come over here and line it up with um, the one that I've already got set and then just tighten it up. Now I'm going to push this all the way over. Uh, now, even if I'm off a little bit here, sometimes, you know, when you break it, you get a little burr or a flare and it sticks out. So it makes your glass not specifically straight or you don't have that right angle. This way I can still use my straight edge over here to make sure that I've got a nice square. All right, square is ready. Come up here. Remember, I want to stay nice and flush with the Morton system. I want to keep my cutter perpendicular to the glass. I don't want to, um, don't want to turn it. I'm slightly exaggerating here. Uh, when you go with a pencil and a ruler, when you're drawing a line with a pencil and a ruler, you tend to come in sideways, right? Come in sideways like this. If you're doing that with a glass cutter and coming in sideways, you're not getting the score, uh, a proper score with the head, and your score is going to be either off or it's just going to be pretty bad. Another important thing I mentioned yesterday, so for anybody that didn't join us yesterday, before you start cutting with your bar, it's nice to, and this isn't something that you have to do every time. This is something that you have to do just one every once in a while, but it's nice to add uh, a little bit of lubricant of some sort on the bar. I don't know if it's necessary lubricant, but it's helping the um, friction, helping so there's not a bunch of friction that's created with the glass or the, uh, the metal on the metal there. So if, you, if you're making scores and you're finding that they're not breaking quite right, it's probably because there's friction. A lot of people think it's them. They think it's the glass cutter. They think it's the glass. And they never realize that there's some friction here and your score isn't going to be nice and smooth and straight because it's kind of doing this little wiggle walk, right? All right. So I've got my score line, right? My running pliers. See my score line there. I want to put my running pliers in just about a oh, quarter eighth of an inch or a quarter three eighths of an inch, half an inch maybe. Hold back as far as I can. The screw should be up. The line should be lined up with that score line. Just give it a gentle squeeze. It's going to break right where you need it to. Voila. Okay. So 
I'm going to set this aside for now. We're not going to prep this with adhesive until I've got a bunch more pieces cut that I'm actually going to put on top of it. So we're going to set that aside for now. And this clear glass, I'm not going to be using that for this project. However, I'm going to bring, let's see, maybe I'll bring this over here so I can just throw it, chuck glass at it as I need to. So like I said, I've got uh, vanilla and almond. They're pretty close. It's kind of hard to tell who's who, but the vanilla actually has a little slight texture on the one side. So that helps you to um, figure out which one is which, which is really helpful for me because I forgot to label this batch when I put it away. Uh, it's got the number over here, but so I suppose I could look it up. Lazy carry. All right. For the basket weave, I need a bunch of little pieces. So this is a fused glass mosaic that I'm creating. Because it's a mosaic, when we're creating in mosaics, we leave little gaps for the grout line in between all the pieces of the glass that we lay down. I'm going to cut my glass. I'm going to set it aside in here. And then I'm going to start to lay it all out. Once I've got it laid out, I'm going to put it on the hot plate that I've got over here. If you don't have a hot plate, you could use a heat gun, you could use your kiln, you could use an oven, a toaster oven. Um, the heat setting is only to heat set the No Days Thin Fuse, and the Thin Fuse activates at about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So not a really high temperature. If you're using your kiln to activate, a ceramic shelf is going to take longer to heat up, so you'll have to get it started in advance or, you know, pull the kiln shelf out and just use fiber or something. Um, but I tend to use the griddle because I can have this on my workspace and uh, it's very convenient. So to start with, I'm going to cut my pieces of glass and the basket weave. Again, I'm going to see if I'm going to give myself a nice straight edge to start with. Um, this isn't quite lined up, so I'm going to give myself a score. I've scored about a half an inch. Yeah, about a half an inch. Typically a quarter to a half an inch is a nice area to score in order to clean up your edge. If you're trying to save too much glass, a lot of times you end up wasting more glass because if you're cutting teeny tiny strips to even it up, it's hard to get it to pull off. So you have to cut it and then it breaks wrong and then you have to cut a straight edge again and it breaks wrong and you cut another straight edge and it breaks wrong. So just give yourself a little bit of waste and none of this is really waste guys i've been making some pot melts this week and it uses all sorts of scrap glass and they're turning out fantastic i'll maybe post a picture of that or the next time i go live maybe i'll just share it with you can so you can see what i've been making but that's a really fun technique too all right so i think what i've done in the past and i'm sure i've got this written down at the studio in my class notes uh, but basically i need to cut some bricks brick tiles, right? It's like the subway tiles that you see, um, how they lay, lay down. In fact, even like, oh, like that brick wall over there or, or over there, see how they're offset, right? So they're long rectangles and they're offset. Well, that's kind of what we're going to do this time, except instead of stacking them like bricks, we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to have some going one way and some going the other way. So if you actually plan this out with different colors, you'd run two different colors horizontally and two different colors vertically. And when you alternate your rows, it kind of looks like a faux basket weave effect. So you don't, you aren't really weaving with the glass, but visually it gives you that uh, woven glass look, okay? So I think in the past I have done, I think I tend to do 3 eighths of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch, but those are really teeny tiny pieces. So just for the sake of getting it moving a little bit faster, um, I always work with teeny tiny pieces but sometimes when you're covering a large, large area, or maybe you're trying to make just a bunch of production pieces to sell, uh, it's easier to cut bigger pieces because then you're not fidgeting with all these small pieces. So I think what I'm gonna do is go half an inch for these and half an inch by, oh, I think seven eighths of an inch would be plenty. Cause there's, let's see if that's my half inch, that gives me, wow, those are pretty big gaps. So I wanna think about the, the gap space. I really only want like maybe an eighth of an inch between my pieces. So really what that means then is half an inch plus an eighth plus a quarter, half an inch plus a quarter. That would be three quarters. All right. So we're going to try that. We're going to try half an inch by three quarters and tell you what I'm going to do first is actually use this scrap piece that I cut off. That's already roughly half an inch. I'm going to cut it into some three quarter sizes just to see 
that that's really exactly what I want. So notice I didn't bother with the glass steps for this because I'm going to be cutting a whole bunch of these all together. So I've got my mark here where I made the three quarters of an inch. I've got my mark here where I made a half an inch. And I tend to end up with a lot of little pencil marks. So if I don't erase them right away, it's nice to label them so you don't forget. So that's my quarter of an inch. And um, I'm just going to put a star because that was my other one. See, already forgot. All right, score line. Now I'm going to take and move that score line over to my cut, my uh, my uh, three quarters of an inch is what I said, right? Okay. I'm going to move it over to that spot and then just give myself another score. And I'm actually kind of doing the thing that I always tell people not to do. So I'm going to move to the side a little bit here. All right, so when you're working with the Morton system or glass in general, anytime you're working, it's nice to be able to give yourself some follow through with your arm, right? You can cut and follow through. If you're scrunched up here in front of yourself, in front of the bar, if you're not to the right of it, if you're right-handed, left of it, if you're left-handed, then your hand is right here in front of you and see how I'm trying to move into my body and it just doesn't want to work. That'd be like, I don't know, I always compare it to, to like bowling like sideways or something or I, I don't know. But give yourself some follow-through here. That way you can cut easily. All right, so I've scored. I'm going to take it back, create another score, bring it back. And this is probably a good amount just to give me an idea. Now, I'm not going to keep these because my line isn't perfectly straight like I want it to be. So I'm just lining these up to make sure that it's actually going to come together like I want it to. And instead of putting it on top of the same color of glass so you guys can see it, I'm just going to put it here. All right, so this is going to give me nice spacing, I believe. And the cool thing about this, too, is if your spacing is just right, you end up with these little tiny um, squares where the grout for it is going to be. So then you have little tiny squares as well. So that looks, um, that looks pretty good. I think that'll work for me. If I went closer, I could eliminate that gap. It just kind of depends on what you want it to look like. And I think, I think I'm going to go with the squares just for this one. I might change up the measurements on the next one. So if you're doing this at home, uh, experiment with your measurements. Maybe you see that you only want to add a quarter of an inch to the half. Is that what I just added? No. Maybe you only want to add 16th of an inch lines. So that would be half an inch plus... Um, a half an inch and then five eighths of an inch. So there's that option too. You could always do several, but let's just keep it simple. All right, this one, I've made my decision, half inch by a quarter of an inch. Aha, uh -huh. so the angle from my phone is on Instagram Live. If you wanna see the one in front of me, you gotta head over to Facebook Live. So No Days Adhesives on Facebook is where I'm live there. It's uh, maybe a little bit bigger. It's a little bit different angle. You guys kind of tend to get the side angle so you can see the cutting a little bit better. All right. Awesome. And you guys get to see me and the board as well. So I can't, I thought about trying to angle this down. I'm going to figure this out in the next few weeks, I think, to where I have several views going all at once. And then everybody gets to see everything. Um, me, if you actually want to see me, but specifically the cutting, because then it's nice and nice and easy. But I haven't got the ideal setup for that yet. All right. So this is the piece that I'm working with. Not huge, right? So I certainly don't even need a six by six piece of this. Probably about half of that space is still going to be a little bit more than I need. So if this is six inches by six inches, then this piece I'll probably need about three inches by six inches, which is why that will probably be about the right amount of glass as well. That's a little bit more than three and it's about six. So that's going to be the perfect amount of glass. I'm still going to have some extras. Uh, these are not the right sizes, so I'm just going to get rid of those out there. It's helpful when you're doing this to have a little bucket for each color that you're cutting because then you can quickly and easily pull them out when you're trying to work again. So, gosh, I'm really I'm torn about that whole square thing. I don't know if I want that square thing. All right, I'm going to leave the square. I'm going to do the square, square in the middle. My spacing, that's it. I'm doing half an inch by three quarter an inch bricks. Here we go. To initially, let's see, so this is, this piece is, oh, about eight and a half inches. So I'll probably only, uh, uh, maybe I'll 
three inches is going to be way more. So maybe I'll just cut like four or five rows this way, and then I'll flip it and cut it the other way. All right, nice and straight up and down. There we go. Move this score line over to the half inch line. Keep my score nice and even from start to finish. My cutter straight up and down. Nice, even pressure. Move that one over to the half an inch mark here. There we go. So that's one, two, three, four. I'll do one more for good measure. Uh, it's probably enough, but you know, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably enough. There we go. Now we're certain, certain it's enough. So you can see here, I've got all of those scores, right? You can see all of the scores right there. I'm not going to break these off individually because that's creating more work for myself. I'm going to break these off as a group. All right. I don't want to break these off individually. I want to cut my bricks first. So now I'm going to go over and cut my bricks. This glass is nice and smooth on both sides. So I'm just going to flip it over and cut my other scores on the other side. That way, if you can score from both sides, there's less chance that your scores are going to cross and confuse each other, especially if maybe your score, your pressure is a little bit too hard. Uh, if you're pressing a little bit too hard or if you're using a glass that's really shocky, um, it's, it's really easy to, for those scores to kind of go every which direction. Typically when you're cutting larger pieces, though, that doesn't happen as much. However, that said, I still like to flip it over. It keeps the score lines separate. It's just easy. All right, three quarters of an inch. I did my half inch on the other side. So now I'm going to do all of my three quarters of an inch scores on this side. Move my glass stop that's over here. There we go. So I give myself some room. And if you end up doing a lot of these, especially if you get a size down that you really like, you can cut a bunch of these and then any extras, just throw them all together. And then you can make some random basket weaves as well. The sample that I'm going to do probably won't be, it, it'll probably just be a pretty simple basket weave looking uh, piece. All right, I've got these. Glass, when you're cutting it, is going to cut easier, straighter. There's less of a chance it's going to go off to the side if you're cutting the short side first. So I like to cut the short sides first. That said, I still like to cut these off in a group because the smaller the piece of glass is that you're removing, so like if you're removing a small bit of glass from the big piece, the smaller piece is the one that's going to get stressed out. So if your score line isn't um, if, if there's anything off about your score line or you've pressed a little bit too hard or there was a seed in the glass that you hit when you're when you're cutting and the glass decides to break sideways, if we can kind of even out the amount of glass on either side of the score line, there's less of a chance of that happening. So I like to break them off in groups of four or two or whatever you have. Now, I have a little teeny tiny bit left over right here, and I certainly could break that off right now, but like I said... If I want to ensure that it's not going to break um, wonky, if I cut all these down first and then break that off, my chances of success are a lot better. I'm not going to have to have all these. I'm not going to have all these pieces of glass. Wait, that's the wrong place. I should be putting these over here and those in there. Those are the pieces I'm going to be using. All right. Again, these can go up top. And now I've got these guys. So. Um, this is skinny enough that you're probably going to be successful doing it that way. Um, if you came down here and broke half off and decided that you wanted to try and cut the other way, you can certainly do that on the other side as well. If that makes sense, great. If it doesn't, just nod your head. Sure. Just kidding. And then we can go over here and break off all of these. Now, somewhere around here, I've got my Morton... My fancy Morton um, runner tools, and those come in really handy for a lot of these kind of breaks where you can just, instead of opening and chomping down on every single break, you can stick it in your hand and press, and everything breaks all at once. Um, it's over there in my mess somewhere, so I was gone for a few weeks. 
I was at a trade show in Las Vegas and then came back and went to Western Nebraska to teach a, a couple of residencies at some high schools out there. So my studio isn't exactly the tidiest. Just the fact that I've got this set up has blown my mind and made me very happy. It's always nice to have a, a studio space that's clean and ready to go. Okay, so I'm just going to walk over here to my my unclean space and grab another tub. I've got tubs galore everywhere. These guys come in handy for everything. Mosaics, use glass, separating the glass, nipping into. Um, I always use these at the studio for folks there too. All right, my vanilla glass. I'm going to take my vanilla glass and check to make sure I've got a nice straight edge. It's nice and square. It's it's close enough for my purposes. So now I'm going to make a whole bunch of the same cuts again. So again, a uh, half inch. And you might recall that I said vanilla has a slight texture on the other side. I could probably cut on that side, I suppose. I, I don't know if I've even tried it. I imagine I could. But, you know, it's okay to cross these lines once in a while. So if you're cutting this, and my scores are a bit hard, I can hear, I can see all the little flecks and hear the little flecks disappearing. I generally stand up when I'm cutting, so I feel like I have to push harder when I'm sitting down. Um, just my excuse, I suppose. That one looks close, but not quite what I want. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Not really sure about the measurement on that. All right, now I'm going to flip it this way. So you can see my scores and you can see how I was pressing a little bit hard and it's uh, a lot of the glass is kind of leaping, right? So that means that you're pressing just a wee bit too hard. So when you're scoring, what you want to do is you're kind of making a V in the glass with the cutter wheel, right? Making a V in the glass. If your pressure is good, you're making that V cut. And then when you break the glass, the glass is going to score right along that line. But if you press too hard, instead of just a V cut, now you've made a V, but a bunch of little micro scores, little branches, right? And at any point where the glass feels like it's going to be easier to take that turn, it will take that turn. So really important to practice on your, your, um, did I move back in front of this again? All right. Anyway. There we go. So I can kind of hear them. I don't know if you guys can hear them when I cross those score lines. I've also decided to let up a little bit so my score isn't quite as heavy handed. Once I run out of room over here, I tend to move my hand over to this side to hold the glass. And I think I've got one more. All right. One more with a little square there. And I'm going to go ahead and break this and see if it breaks right or if it takes a turn. It broke right. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in my scrap. Typically what I do before I throw it in a scrap is I'll break all of my scores. I don't like there to be scores in my glass scrap. I don't know, maybe it's OCD, maybe it's just me. Now you know a little bit more about me. All right, time to go in here and break these down. It doesn't look straight, but I'm sure it is. Okay, so I'm not going to break it down this way first because that's the long way. I don't want it to accidentally break wrong. I'm going to break it the short way first. So I'm going to come in here and break off a, a group of four and another group of four. All right. And this, I've got some skinnies and they're uneven, so I'm just going to break them off that way now instead. I'm going to do the same thing over here, break these down so they're smaller. Uh, remember, it's not necessary, but it's a good practice to get into because... Uh, when your score is off a little bit, the glass, you know, the glass is going to break in whatever direction is easier for it. And I realize that might be kind of loud for you folks with the, uh, the microphone. So I'm going to break them down here and then not in my tub. So I hope you're all staying safe, not panicking too much. You know, is Oh, see, check it out. It scored a little bit off. So like I said, um, that was one of mine where I was pushing a little bit too hard. So I'm just going to toss that one there. Um, this one looks all right. And this one looks all right. And I'll just toss that one over there too. Probably still plenty. We did have the first announcement of COVID in our community. 
And I have a friend in California that's in shelter in place orders and they just had the first notification of somebody in, in their community. And I I don't know if it's the newspaper is reporting the same person, but if it is, it's her friend and it's kind of sad because she's in the hospital with a fever and diabetic and she's really worried and stressful times we're living in. So it's nice to be able to get in the studio, make a little bit of glass, take your mind off of things, sometimes shut the news off a little bit. Okay, no days thin fuse. Sorry, did that kind of fast. I forgot. No days thin fuse is the next step here. So I have my glass base again. I need to prep the base. So I'm going to prep the base with the adhesive. And the adhesive comes on this paper. There's actually a spot here where you can see the paper came off. And there's a little bit of that thin fuse hanging out. It is really thin. Like this stuff is super thin. It's kind of like um, cling wrap, you don't want to apply, you don't want to peel it off of the paper until you have your glass ready, right? So to do this, I'm going to come in here and, and you can piece it together too. So that's what I'm doing is with some of my scraps. Um, I've used this obviously before. I'm going to put that there and I'm going to come over here and just cut along this side here. Not exactly the kind of cutting the Morton system had in mind when you were cutting, but hey, it works. And then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to cut this off as well. And I might need to cut a little bit more. Now the thing about the thin fuse is if there's a little bit of a gap, oh, I think that's going to be perfect. Awesome. If there's a little bit of gap in between uh, the glass and the adhesive, so say the adhesive doesn't fully cover, but there's little teeny tiny places where it doesn't fully cover, I always tell people it's okay if it's not covering it, so long as the piece of glass that you're putting down isn't going to be smaller than the gap, obviously, right? Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Here's the no days thin fuse and the glass. So I've got, I've got the, um, the thin fuse on the release liner. It's kind of got a ridged texture to it, right? Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of a ridge texture to it. So if you're looking at it and trying to figure out which side it's got the adhesive on it, there's a little bit of a ridged uh, appearance to it, and you can feel it's not quite as uh, the texture is a little bit different. That's what I got. Okay, I'm gonna put this down. Get right like that, and now I'm going to burnish, which is a fancy word for rub. I'm going to burnish the back of the paper, and this is to try and get it to grab onto the adhesive, to grab onto the glass. I'm really concentrating on just that one corner where I want it to start, and then both sides, and then once it gets going, still didn't, sometimes a different tool works. I find that the differences in humidity from place to place can change what tool works better for whatever reason. Maybe it's just my head, but it's um it's funny sometimes it's just a different tool all right so once it's stuck let's pick this up and see if you can see that sticking there right you can kind of see right there where it's sticking i don't want to now take this paper and just pull it up because the the thin fuse is kind of stuck to the paper right now right i want to transfer it to the glass so i'm peeling back like shelf paper or shelf liner right like you would apply shelf liner and if it wrinkles, that's totally fine. It's a little wrinkly. A little wrinkly doesn't matter. It's just the adhesive. It doesn't need to look pretty. It's done its job as far as coverage is concerned. It's where I need it to be. I've just got this spot over here where I need to put some more down. So I'm going to come on over here and do the same thing. Try and get it to grab hold. All right, I think it's doing it. It's doing it. And then again, I'm just going to peel it back. I think I'm going to do that too, just to kind of get those sides sticking a little bit better. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now I can show you this. So you can kind of see when the light catches it, there is a gap. Oh no. But remember what I said. That piece or that gap is so much bigger than any of the pieces that I'm going to be putting down that I don't need to worry about it. I'm ready to go. Excellent. Okay. 
this piece is going to go down. What I'm going to do is build on my my uh, cake spatula, Milton cake spatula. That way you guys can kind of see the white pieces stand off, and then I'll be able to transfer it to my my hot plate, which I'm going to make sure is actually turned on right now. So one moment, plug this in. This is my griddle. I picked it up. It's a Farberware griddle. The reason I liked it is because it's square and I do a lot of glass on glass mosaic mandalas with no days mosaic adhesive and they all fit on here, which is awesome. So I don't have to use the heat gun. Did I mention I'm lazy? Okay, so I've got this ready to go. I turn it on to warm, basically. Bas I plug it in. It's already set to warm. There is no lower temperature than warm. If I need to, I can turn it up just a touch to low, but the temperature doesn't need to be very hot in order for this to activate. So what we'll do is we'll move this a little bit closer so you can kind of see what's happening while that's doing its thing after we actually get some of this done. So I'm going to get this built. I'm putting my pieces together and then I'll just dump those guys out there. And then I'll dump these guys out here. I've got my, my two piles now. And can you guys see that? Okay, you can. Good. So when I'm doing this, I like to start at an edge and build up to the edge. However, remember, I'm doing this basket weave thing. So if I have another piece going across like this, then um, my edge is going to be a little bit different. It might be that I have to cut off some of my pieces when I get to the edge, but it's also, it's really hard to get for it to stick into some of these areas on the edge. So if I can build on the edge, if I can start on the edge and all my pieces actually end up um, working out decently, then I don't have to worry too much about um, getting the frit in those little gaps. There's still going to be some spaces on the edge where I have to work with it to get it to stick. Unless I can outsmart the glass. All right. Should I cut these different sizes? Don't tell me that. Okay. Okay. Disregard. Okay, so I think I'll do vanilla go in one direction and almond go in the other direction. So every piece that goes this way is going to be my vanilla. There we go. Every piece going this direction is going to be my almond. And as I'm building, I don't need to be super, super careful about where everything lays down because when I get all of this onto the hot plate, it the adhesive turns to a liquid and makes it really easy to move things directly into place. So I don't get too persnickety on placement at this point. I just wanna make sure that everything's about where it needs to be and my gaps are even-ish. Looks like some of my cuts were a little less than desirable, but glass melts. As long as the bottom side is, is approximately where it needs to be, you won't be able to see too much that my cuts are off. Okay, that goes there. So yeah, at the studio I had at least one of these. This is a class that I do often with larger round pieces. So when we're working larger like that, we do tend to use the heat gun. Uh, just because if I don't have this hot plate there, then you kind of have to, or we could throw it in the kiln. But if I throw it in the kiln, then people would have to stand over it. Like, so the glass, the glass will hold its heat for a little while, but after a while it starts to cool down. So if you, you know, if you wanted to, you could start it in the kiln and then bring it out and use the heat gun while you're moving everything around. That's a, a really good way to do that. Uh, if you're working with larger pieces, like larger substrates, because you know you can thermal shock glass and if you thermal shock the glass it will break and it, it is fusible so you can put it back together but it's still sad and you can still sometimes see the spot where it broke so to avoid a little heartbreak <laughs> um, if you want to do it in the kiln you know heat it up in the kiln you can heat it up in the kiln and then uh, bring it out and continue heating with the heat gun thing for this texture on this vanilla because if it wasn't there I would really have to look closely and I don't know if I could tell the difference maybe it's, I mean there's definitely there's a slight difference here you can definitely see it but 
it would uh, it could give you a headache if you weren't sure. All right, I'm gonna go there. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing this, um, like I said, I do it on circles, and when I get to the edge, there's a little bit here that I just want to get rid of because for it to go in easily. Um, when I'm working on a circle and I get to the edges, actually even here, when I get to the edges, I don't necessarily cut the pieces to fit in advance. I'll heat set the pieces and then after they come off, I'll use my glass cutter and the breaker grozers that I was using before a second ago and I'll cut the edges so that they're perfect, perfectly exactly where they needed, you know, need to be. So especially like up here on the edges, um, you know, instead of cutting that to be, to fit right now, I can just put a piece there in place. Or I can build this all, and that's probably what I'm going to do, because I'm not too sure on my spacing yet. So if I can get, get all the pieces in place, then when I get it on the hot plate, I can go back in and do some spacing, uh, rearrange things, make sure everything's exactly where it needs to be. So really, I'm just kind of throwing things down. So yeah, again, hope everybody's staying safe. If you don't have to worry about your families or toilet paper or provisions. I ventured out into the world yesterday to get groceries and was pleased to see that I still have access to food. It's always nice. Um, I never know after watching the news, which is why the news can be so disheartening sometimes. The toilet paper row was pretty empty. The tuna aisle, it was pretty empty. My poor, my poor kitty, she's not gonna, she's gonna have to uh, go into rationing here. And I'm sure this will blow over and we'll all be fine eventually, but you know, in the meantime, it's, it's worrisome and especially when some of our friends are sick. All right, so I've got the edges. I'm not gonna worry about those yet. Uh, if you wanted to, you could place them on there, but it's not going to balance very well. I'm going to wait until I have the hot plate, and then I'm going to balance it. So I'm going to do a little shuffle here so that I've got my extra pieces available if needed. I'm going to need my tweezers. Right here are my extra pieces. Definitely cut more almonds than vanilla. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can arrange these, too. You don't have to do just a basket weave mosaic. I'll try and pull up some pictures at, uh, later and add them to the Facebook thread so that you can see some of the various ways to arrange it. I'm going to shuffle this over to the hot plate, just put it down for now. Because So what's going to happen is the heat's going to heat up the metal first, and then it's going to start heating up the glass, and then it's going to start heating up the other glass, and then the glue in between is going to start to liquefy. I'll probably shove that aside so that when I'm moving pieces, the, the metal doesn't doesn't interfere because sometimes it's a little bit slippery, but well, maybe not. It doesn't seem to be affecting it so far. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to call that yet. Okay. Let me get this cutting board out of the way and move the heat station a little bit closer so you can see what's going on there. I know you may or may not be able to see this, uh, and there's not really much to see now, but at least Instagrammers, I'll give you a little a close-up view here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the adhesive, you, it's uh, ridged. It hasn't started to melt yet. You know, you can see it along the edges where it's still sticking out. That means it's not quite hot enough yet. So it's not ready to do much of anything with. If I was going to try and futz with it, now isn't the best time. Once the heat travels through the base piece of glass, it's going to start liquefying the adhesive in certain areas. And now I can see, it looks over here like it's starting to get warmer. These hot plates, they have hot spots on them. So sometimes you'll find that one spot heats up quicker than another. But I can kind of start to see over here where it's liquefying a little bit. Looks like it's getting a little bit closer. Let's see you guys giving you another little glance here. Um, over here, it's kind of starting to liquefy, right? So. Everywhere the glass isn't covering it yet, it's going to be starting to liquefy. I can tell that it's not liquefied under these pieces of glass because, oh, look at that one. That one's moving. Because if I push down on the piece and it doesn't move, 
that means that the, the adhesive underneath it has not liquefied yet. So glass is an insulator. It's going to hold the heat away initially. Um, so this piece of glass is going to heat up, but this piece of glass is cooled down so that adhesive can't melt yet until the top piece is also 160 degrees. So once that happens, I can start kind of moving these pieces around. See how they kind of wiggle like that? It becomes really easy to figure out my spacing. So I'm just going to come back and see if I can't space things out a little bit differently. I don't know what I want to do on the edge just yet. Uh, I was thinking about trying to cut all of these pieces a little bit short so I wouldn't have any frit on the edges over there, but then I realized I was still going to have to cut some pieces in half or short, so we'll just, uh, we'll just play a game with the frit on this side. Instead, and then I can move that a little bit closer and it looks like maybe a half a piece I'll get over there. But if I can just, you know, if I can do this and start evening out my spacing across the way, this is where, you know, you, this is where you want to get a little bit more fidgety because wherever these pieces, you know, the glue is now what's holding these pieces in place. So, hmm, if I, hmm, do I want to push those over or just, I kind of do, because see on the edge here, these are all hanging off a little bit, but if I push it over, I'm going to have to get the frit to hang out a little bit closer on these edges, but I don't know. I could always just ignore it and not put frit on the edges. Then the glass has, uh, when I flip it over, the glass will have a little bit of a clear lens that falls down and over. So that's always an option too. That might look good. Maybe that's what I'll do just to see how it turns out. Notice I'm working on a small piece. One, this way you guys don't have to sit here hours waiting for me to finish a project. But two, whenever I'm trying a new technique or I have a new idea, it's nice to start with a smaller sample piece. That way you haven't put hours and hours and hours into a piece that you're experimenting on only to find out that it fails when it comes out of the kiln. That's never fun. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this spacing. I guess we'll just, just keep going and see. I mean, it's not like I'm super attached to this piece. It's always a good place to be in glass. If you're not really attached to the outcome, then you won't be nearly as disappointed if it doesn't turn out, huh? It's a good mindset to be in when you're experimenting with anything, really. Um, if you can be detached, then you allow yourself some room for surprise. Uh, it's always good, especially, so for instance, um, it doesn't apply to this product, but another one. So um, I've been working with No Days for quite a while and the No Days Groutless adhesive, somebody once asked me, um, it's, it's a black, uh, it comes in black, clear and pewter and it's for uh, mosaics, not for fusing. So it's a little bit change of subject, but Somebody wants to ask me, well, it's black and can, can you do glass on glass mosaics with it? And my first thought was, well, it's black. No, why would you, why would you think you could do that? But I didn't want to just flat out say no if I wasn't sure. So I made some samples and lo and behold, I found out, oh, you actually can. And I just did a couple of small samples initially just to test it because why would I want to do something big if one, I already thought it was going to fail but it actually ended up turning out. So I was kind of surprised. Okay, well, I have a couple of little areas over here where I can fit some more glass. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, this is the vanilla row. So I'm gonna stick some vanilla there. And notice I'm not cutting it. I'll cut it afterwards. When the pieces are a little bit smaller like this, sometimes they kind of can, uh, can jump off. So we'll see if that happens uh, when I'm cutting it, that is. And you might get an idea of what I'm talking about as it happens later, but we shall see. And then some of those spots hmm, could potentially do. Hmm, could potentially do like a little happy, not even half, just teeny, teeny bit put some of my guys closer together, move them over a little bit, and then make room for even more glass. 
Why not? Looks like I could do that in a couple of these areas. And then it'll make it look like my design's just going off the edge. So this is kind of the idea of, um, when it's a straight piece like this, uh, it's a square. This isn't as, uh, I mean, this isn't as much of a whoa idea as it is when you're working on something that's round. Because when you're working on something that's round, cutting all the pieces to fit the edge can be a royal um, pain. So if you've got, you know, if you've got the thin views to hold all your pieces in place, you just put, and, and these can even be some of the scrap pieces that you cut that weren't quite, weren't quite fitting, right? Because you're going to cut them up anyway. So you can put some of those pieces on there. Then after it heat sets, you'll have a really good, um, a good bond. All right, it's moving around, moving around, moving around. The key is I just want to make sure that these new pieces that I put on there are nice and hot so that they really stick because if they don't really stick, and when I go to cut them, they're just going to fall off. So, see how that one's not quite moving yet. But they're getting there. They're, just, they're getting pretty darn close here. And because I'm feeling lazy, I don't want to put any more pieces over there. Is that okay, everyone? Okay, good. All right. That's good, good. Uh, that one's, all right, that one's pretty good. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this sit. For a little bit once I take it off here and it'll set up pretty quickly. I'm just going over my my spacing and making sure everything looks good. I think it looks good. I'm gonna pull it off. So I'm gonna move this aside again. I'm gonna pull that mosaic off. And then while we're waiting for it to cool down. It doesn't really take very long before we can continue with what we're doing here. keep an eye on it. Just kidding. All right. Next step. The next step is to add frit into all the spaces after I cut it, of course, but it's too hot. I can't cut it yet. So we're just going to sit here and watch it, watch it dry. I'm going to prep the no days adhesive. So this is the liquid fusing adhesive. I figured I'd show you guys how I like to use it um, to prevent leaks and such from happening. All right. The pin is for perforating the metal on top. So that metal is holding the glue in so it doesn't uh, spill all over during transit. Instead of taking that all off, I just like to put a little pin hole in there. There we go. And now that's going to let it come out, but it's not going to, like the whole thing isn't going to be open. This is going to need, this is the lid. There's a needle nip, needle nip, needle nose tip in there, right? Um, so it doesn't let a whole lot of glue out and it doesn't need a whole lot of glue, but I always figure if there's just a little tiny bit of that glue, um, or a little tiny bit of the glue coming out, then at least it's going to prevent if it, if it spill, you know, if it, uh, if it would, for some reason, if your cap isn't on too tight or isn't on tight enough, it can leak and then you could get glue all over the place. I would typically take my breaking, um, my um, breaker grocers and twist that really good. And that's going to prevent it from leaking all over the place. But these breaking breaker grocers aren't quite big enough. So I'm just going to do that for now. There we go. All right. Um, this only comes in the four ounce sizes now. So the tip's a little bit smaller and you can actually really get a good grip on the lid. This is the eight ounce size. So a bit bigger. Um, Feel this starting to cool down a little bit. Let's just move it over here and on the table, put that piece over here again. Still a bit warm, but I'm going to, I'm going to proceed just so we don't have to sit here listening to me say nothing or, or alternatively nothing. I'm going to score right on top of the base piece of glass, right? Um, I'm visualizing the line here. I'm going to give you guys a view from top here so you can see, but right here, you can see the edge of the piece of glass. That is exactly where I want to score. That's going to be where I break these pieces. Let me stick this back up over here. I don't know if you guys can get a good view or not, but <laughs> all right. 
that's where I'm going to score right over the edge. I can see where I'm going. So I just give it a nice score right along the edge of the glass. Right along the edge of the glass. Okay, those sides are fine. This side I'm going to change, do the same thing. Here's this vanilla that's got the texture. So we'll see how well that works. And it kind of wants to jump around a little bit, but we'll see. So when there's textures, I tend to push a little bit harder just to really get my score going where I want it to be. But I can definitely hear it and feel it. So I'm crossing my fingers. The reason I'm using vanilla is because I really love the reactions that you can get. And as it fuses, it ends up making this really cool ring around each of the pieces. So I'll post a picture later when it's all finished. You guys can see. Okay, still kind of warm. I'm gonna press my luck and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll let it cool down a little bit more. But um, actually I might even just be able to go like this. Right? So remember when you're breaking a score line, you're pushing up underneath the score line and down on either side. Well, this glass is pressing down on one side. So just by pushing down on that side, I was able to, to break it that way, but it didn't work quite as cleanly as it could have. All right, I'm scared because it's still warm. There we go. Don't be scared, Carrie, you can do this. All right, so with my breaker grocers, I'm just going right up into the line and pulling back and down. Oh, see, it was still warm. All right, well, I'm just gonna break this with my, uh, with my running pliers and I'll stick it back on there and probably even stick it back on a hot plate. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll just, what I'll do. So typically what I would do is I would put it back on the hot plate and let everything get nice and warm and cozy so that it wouldn't move when I'm going in there to frit it. But for the sake of keeping this video a little bit shorter, it's already pretty long, a little bit shorter, I'm just gonna go ahead and frit gently in that area, okay? There we go. Okay, since those other pieces were big enough, I could do that with them too, but they're not quite big enough. But I have a feeling they're gonna pop off too. Just because there's not a lot of, oh, that one was good. And, oh, that one was good, but I feel like this one was already kind of coming off when I was doing that. Oh, it did it. So I probably just got a little bit anxious over here. Okay, so now you can see, like if, imagine this was a circle dish that you were working on instead of trying to cut all of those random pieces to fit on the edge how you could just cut the pieces and um, af after they've been heat set it makes it so much more convenient oh, I love looking at this already you can kind of see the little dog bone effect going on just visually it's it's totally um, a trompe la right okay time for Fritz so I'm going to take a piece of paper and put it underneath, probably a couple pieces of paper and stick it underneath because this is going to catch my extra frit because I'm going to have uh, more frit go down than I'm probably going to use. And some people like to put these on cups and pull them up off the surface, but that's just something, something you can think about. Okay, to get started, I'm going to take the frit and I want the frit to go into all the gaps. So I'm just going to take a spoonful of frit and I'm just gonna place it down. Now, some people, I show them this and then they come back and they're doing this. And this is just, uh, I mean, it, this is just taking a lot more time and that that frit isn't where it needs to be anyway. So just put a big, big bunch of frit down and then we're gonna do like when we grout. We're just gonna pull the frit across the glass, just like we would with grout. We're pulling the grout across the glass and it's gonna fill into all the gaps, right? I'm just pulling it across. Now this is gonna be the back side of my piece. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about any of the little bits of frit that end up on top of the glass. Also, I typically don't way because I kind of like the way it looks. I don't care if there's a little tiny dot of a piece of frit somewhere on my design. I think it looks more organic. I don't mind it as much. Some people are really bothered by that. So, you know, if you're going to be one of those people that's bothered by that, then you'll want to make sure that you're, you know, you get out a, a, 
a brush and brush off each of those little bits of frit so it doesn't bother you. But again, this is your backside. People aren't supposed to look at your backside. Yeah. Or are they? It amazes me how many, how many, uh, I mean, glass is tactile, so yeah, a lot of times you can pick it up. And if this is a bowl, I can understand. Maybe you're looking at the backside. But if this is hanging on a wall, especially, then really nobody should be looking at the backside. All right, I'm almost done already. And I've got a little bit off on the edges. That's fine. I'm going to be able to reclaim it now. I'm only using one color of frit on this one. I have done in the past where I've used a couple different colors of frit and that can be kind of cool and I just do it kind of in wavy designs. I'll try and remember to uh, post those those pictures of those pieces in the comments uh, for this uh, video on Facebook. And then um, maybe when this comes out of the kiln I'll post it and maybe some of the other pictures or maybe I'll post the pictures that I find in my story on Facebook right means I have to find them first or Instagram sorry so confusing okay now I've got this going now remember oh I found a gap remember I wanted my clear to be the top because I like there to be a lens so in order to get this in the kiln and only fire it once before slumping. I probably won't slump this piece. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but before slumping, I only like I only want to fire this once. I don't want to do a fire and then a flip and fire. So I'm going to tack all this frit in place and after it dries, I can load it into the kiln. Oh. Instagrammers just got disconnected. We must have gone for I don't know what like an hour. Have we gone for an hour already? Good times. Oh, and I took off the blue one. So before I put back on the lid, I like to make sure that this blue is actually on top of this. This is a needle needle tip applicator, and you can see the you can see the the needle maybe. There we go. That goes inside the needle tip applicator to keep it open, right? So you don't want to like continually put this back on and back on while you're using it. Just put it aside. Uh, and if the blue one is, if that blue is over here and then it becomes really hard to see that, I mean, you can't see it at all. So I like to make sure that the blue's over here. Now it's gonna look like I'm using a lot of this, but it comes out in tiny little drops. So I'm not really using that much at all. And as I do this, you might be able to see, some of it goes on the surface of the glass. It's okay. It'll burn off cleanly. You can kind of see though on the other pieces or the uh, the frit how the frit kind of changes color. Um, wet frit looks a little bit darker than dry frit, so that's one way to keep track of where you've already been. Um, I'll get some more of this done and then I can pick it up and show you guys because it tacks the frit in place, especially the fine frit, almost instantly. So I'll be able to lift this up and tilt it, and the frit won't go. Um, flying anywhere. It'll stay right where I right where I put it. Now if you get a little bit of um, when you're recycling your frit, if you get a little bit of this adhesive on on the frit that you you put back, I typically don't really worry about it. Um, you can still use it. It'll burn apart and um, it might just be a little bit bigger of a chunk in your frit jar. Um, I typically am not bothered by it, typically don't even notice it, but again, that's going to be up to you and how you like to store your supplies and tools, etc. Sometimes I wish I was a little more OCD. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. It's hard to say. I like being organized, but I guess maybe if I was OCD, I wouldn't really be able to stay organized or at least stay organized and work. Like I'd be really organized, but I would never be in the studio because it was perfect already. But man, it would sure be nice to have a, an OCD clone who could come in and organize the studio for me when I'm done working. Wouldn't that be life? 
And I do have a public studio space at Architectural Glass Arts where I do work occasionally. Sometimes I find that that's nicer. Um, sometimes it's nicer to get out of the house and go into the studio because then you're accountable for your workspace because other people might need to use it while you're gone. So then you really have to clean up after yourself versus you know, in my basement after I'm done here, if I feel like oh, I'm wiped out, I can't take any more of this, I'd rather even do laundry, right? That's desperate. <laughs> I'll just leave it here and then before I work next time, I'm gonna have to clean it up. So really should get into a better habit cleaning up right when I'm done. But sometimes you just go until you can't go anymore and then you've just hit a wall. or you get hungry. With all this time at home though, now is a really good time to be organizing the studio, organizing the house, maybe even spring cleaning a little bit early. I know later today when I'm done with this, I will be doing some laundry. I've got, let's see, I've got some Probably Italian sandwiches. These really simple, easy Italian sandwiches from Trader Joe's. It's the best. You get the ciabatta. You get this artichoke tapenade spread. I love the mushrooms that they have. So they have these roasted oyster mushrooms. I pick up a packet of those. What else? Oh, their bruschetta sauce. And then the fresh mozzarella. Oh, don't forget the arugula. And having a lemon is helpful too. Lemon and olive oil, salt and pepper. Those are the ingredients, right? You take the ciabatta, you cut it in half, you open it up, you toast it for a little bit just to get it warm. Actually, I think you cook it for a little bit to get it warm and then cut it open and start to put your ingredients on. So the antipasto all goes on one side and then I put the bruschetta and the mozzarella on the other side and then I put those in and I let it cook again and then I pull it out, put a little arugula in the middle with the lemon oil and the olive, the lemon and the olive oil, salt and pepper, put it together and that is delicious. Maybe I'll go live for like a cooking with Carrie later, huh? Really easy cooking with Carrie too. Like that is, it's such a good dish and so simple. All right, so the edges, just gonna clear some of the frit off of the edges now. Now this adhesive, this doesn't dry right away. This is gonna take probably overnight before it fully dries. Um, but it is so tacky. That is the wonderful thing about this. I do a lot of stringer plates as well, where you build on the build on your clear base, put your stringers on, put drips of glue on either side, and then uh, after that's dried, you can flip it over directly onto the shelf, and those turn out amazing. All right, so we're going to find out the moment of truth. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. Oh, I did. Okay, there's a little couple pieces here and there for it, but now you can see the frit, I didn't quite get some, I pretty well got the edges. You know, there's a couple spots on the edges where it might um, might not be on as thick. But remember, when I fire this, do I dare? I'm going to flip it over. This is that one piece. I'm going to flip it over like that on the kiln shelf, right? And then fire it that way. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit first. Obviously, it's it's got enough adhesive on it. I'm not going to have to worry. I don't have to wait overnight if I wanted to fire this. I could actually fire this right now. But I'm going to wait a little bit for this to, to, uh, to dry just a touch more and clean up my space. And then I'll probably put this in the kiln later this evening. And then I'll share pictures with you tomorrow when I open it. So I'm so excited. So I'm going to share with you in this thread, I think in this thread, the inspiration for this mosaic because I found a really cool picture on Pinterest, of course, where else would you find it? But there was no credit on the image, so I have no clue where it's from. I did a reverse image search, quickly didn't find anything, so I'll see if I can't find a little bit more about it. It just looks like an old mosaic, fairly simple mosaic, but the colors are what really drew me in. And it was that, it, it made me think of the French vanilla. So I'm gonna share that picture with you. I'm gonna share some more pictures of what other projects I've done like this and some of the various patterning that you can come up with. And then, uh, yeah, if there's any other questions, just leave a comment or a question in the thread and I'll, I'll answer that too. So thanks again for joining me. Kept this one a little bit shorter, just over an hour. So thanks for hanging in there and uh, we'll see you 
whenever I choose to go live next. So I've got the setup in, in the studio ready now, um, but to do this, I have to bring my computer down from the office and it's not a laptop. So uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, click the follow and then get notifications if you'd like to be notified when these live events occur so that you can participate and watch them and they'll be available later to watch too. So if you don't miss it, always head on over to the website and you can, uh, the Facebook page that is, and you can join in later. All right. Have a great evening. Stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands.